Good morning and welcome to the sixth annual Mother Tongue Film Festival. Thank you for joining us. Live real-time captioning and American Sign Language interpretation are available during today's live program. To view the simulcast that includes these services, please use the link provided in the comments section. If you're viewing this program after the live broadcast, please note that it will also be made available on the web website with closed captioning. My name is Joshua Bell. I'm curator of globalization at the National Museum of Natural History and co-director of the Mother Tongue Film Festival. I want to begin by acknowledging with respect the Piscataway people on whose traditional land territory the Smithsonian, indeed my own home, stands and whose relationship with the land west of the Chesapeake continues into today. Founded in 2016, the Mother Tongue Film Festival opens on the United Nations International Mother's Language Day, which happens every, day, every year on February 21st. The festival is an effort of recovering voices, a Smithsonian initiative involving the National Museum of Natural History, the Center for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage, the National Museum of American Indian, and the Asia Pacific American Center. We are grateful to our Smithsonian and non-Smithsonian partners for their support and extend our thanks to our sponsors, especially to the Ministry of Culture of Taiwan, the Taiwan Academy, and the Smithsonian National Museum of Asian Art, who have made this conversation possible. Today, I welcome you to the Mountain Q&A. This program is part of the 2021 Mother Tongue Film Festival, whose theme this year is the healing power of storytelling. This year, the festival takes place entirely online, and as always, highlights the confluence of cinematic and mother languages. Today, we invite you to participate in the conversation with director Su Hong In about his film, The Mountain, um, which was an official selection of this year's Mother Tongue Film Festival. We'll be taking your comments and questions in the live chat below, so please participate. If you are new to the festival, I encourage you to check out our website, which is mothertongue.si.edu, to learn about the featured films and upcoming events. Your feedback is always welcome on the festival's social media channels. Now I'd like to welcome our guests. Director Su Hong In, joining us from Taiwan. Eddie Chen, also in Taiwan, who will be supporting translations. And our interviewer, curator mm -hmm. of film, Tom Vick, who's joining us from Washington, DC. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Good morning. Great. Well, thank you, Josh. Uh, as Josh mentioned, I'm Tom Vick, uh, curator of film at the Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Galleries, which together comprise the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. Uh, welcome, Hung An. It's great uh, to have you, and congratulations on your film. Thank you. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Su Hong An, and the director of The Mountain. It's very pleased to meet you all. Great. So my first question is, uh, what got you interested in indigenous rights in Taiwan, and why did you choose to use your grandfather as this sort of way of exploring this subject? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's mostly about my uh, self-identify. I was mixed with uh, Taiwanese and uh, indigenous people in Taiwan. So, uh, you know, there, there's some... Um, I thought I thought it was like uh, you you saw something through your uh, childish to when you grew up, and and you realize that the you have you have a the different uh, uh, I mean different character or um so in so he actually realized um, he is different from others because he grew up in not in the mountain with the tribe but with the indigenous community but with Han community so he actually realized his difference and in his previous work he actually did another half of his heritage which is taiwanese heritage and um he did a documentary about the um about the grandfather from his his father's part and um so in this in this time with the mountain he actually do this to sort of explore or de develop his interest in his another half heritage yes and the, 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 so what's your second question? Sorry. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you've answered the first question. The second question is I'm interested in the process of working with him because for me, at first, it kind of looked like some of the scenes were staged, you know, I mean, because the camera's very, you know, still. Um, obviously, you needed to compose the images to, you know, for the scenes to work. But I understand that this was actually more the result of kind of spending time with him and learning, you know, his movements and the way he went about his day and basically like placing your camera in relation to the way he actually works. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the process of, of collaborating with him. Okay. Uh, uh, we, I have. Uh, filming my grandfather for a few years mm. and uh, the first stage that we use a digital camera and and when we use the digital machine to shoot a person you 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 don't have the limited to to <laughs> to shoot him uh, to capture those uh, capture his his movement and it's not the it's not quite the Good tempo for me. Is to, uh, when you use a digital camera, everything will be quick, and everything you 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 see and you want to you want to record it. And uh, in the in the second year, the the my photographer, uh, I talked to my photographer, and he suggested that perhaps we could use the, the with the film. And okay, then then we do it in the in the, the in the second stage. And uh, because we have the we have doing the file research for for the years, so uh, we could always find the best position to film my grandfather. So it looks like being staged, but actually it's not. We have it, it, we have we have uh, a, uh, we have some time to prepare and to get the best position for the for the film mm. Mm. and what and uh using 16 millimeter film these days is uh, pretty rare i think and it, it provides it has its own challenges in other words you're much more limited in what you can shoot you have to be much more economical so what, were there any challenges in 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 using 16 millimeter film for this project did you miss out on anything that you wish you could have captured or was it uh, did it work well for you it looks beautiful by the way i mean i think it was the right decision because it has a nice quality to it and the pace seems to fit with life on the mountain but uh, i'm wondering if there were challenges to that as well uh you know when we use the digital camera we 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 have we have filmed film him for well well i will you and i say um uh, we use a lot of interview to yeah but but in the 60 millimeter we, we move we move remove those parts so you you couldn't see the any interview part of the, the people like talking in, in front of the camera and uh, and uh, while we were hunting uh, in the mountain my grandfather hunting in the mountain uh it's take it takes few few days about four or five days we we live in the mountain and there's this thing that he Remove the, the the animal from his trap, but you know that is really far from our camp. So the the crew couldn't get the the the, the place. So we didn't we missed it. It is a little bit pity. <laughs> I think that the, the the most part that I want to capture. But uh, anyway. I want to know is if you use sixteen sixteen millimeter's camera to shoot, is there any reason why you use sixteen millimeter's camera? 就是困难的,或者是或者你觉得有有拍到的. I'm trying to explain him. Um, 我刚才说就是那个因为太远没有办法拍到。可是跟十六厘米真的是因为。哦,OK,这是唯一的一个。比较大的,比较我。OK,Yeah,so, okay. okay. so, um, and I think in our previous conversation with, with um, director Su, he also, he also mentioned that um, his choice of using, using, um, the six millimeter. six millimeter rather than the handheld digital camera also gives him this freedom of being an observer rather than a judge or the know-it-all kind of director mm. and present the the um the fact and what's happening of the event is as close to the real event as possible rather than a reinterpretate interpretator yeah Right, it's less intrusive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So um, you also include uh, a lot of archival footage in the film, kind of showing the history of, of indigenous people in Taiwan. And one thing that really struck me was that in both cases of the Japanese occupation and the Chinese occupation, language was used to kind of control the native population. Everyone had to eat, learn Japanese or learn Mandarin. And, and so I'm wondering, uh, did that result in people, you know, were languages lost? Uh, you know, were people able to hold on to their cultures and languages throughout all that? Could you talk a bit about what that, what that experience was for people in Taiwan? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yes, we have been lost some uh, ability to speak our own language in my generation. Uh, but uh, in my parents' uh, generation, they could they they still have the ability to to speak the mother language because of because of they could uh, speak in their ho their home through their parents and learn through their parents. Uh, I think the the most uh, important reason that we lost our language is we this about the environment that we don't have the chance to use our language. You know, as you know, I, I can speak English better than my my indigenous language. So uh, this kind of the uh, culture colonial also changes uh, many in many subjects, such as the most important, uh, such as a religion. Uh, most of the ninety percent of my uh, my. Uh, my families they believe in the Catholic. They are Catholic or they are Christian. Christian, yes, they are Christian. And uh, we have all uh, lost our traditional religion because we, we we used to have a shaman. We have the we have many uh, traditional uh, ritual in the old days, but now we all, we almost lost it. Do you want to mention the yeah, 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 the Bible thing? Yep, um, because he he mentioned it earlier to me that um, it's not. It seems like it's the the traditional culture has been oppressed by dominant culture, but in another way, it actually helped to preserve the culture as well. In the sense that um, the for example, the dominant culture actually built in the religions in order to um assimilate the culture to to the dominant culture but um throughout the generation um, through the generations we uh, we actually found out the the religion in order to assimilate the 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 indigenous culture they actually have to translate or use roman roman characters to to document their languages and that's how these languages got to Got to be preserved, yes. and we can we can start we can we can still find back all those languages by study the the Bibles or or the um, yes. religious books from from the past. Okay. And one thing interesting is that um, the best the best ones who can speak the native in, uh, the native uh, languages are those who are closest to the to the dominant religions. So that's something interesting in in indigenous community. Yes, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, it, to continue on this sort of line, it also seemed that um, you know when when uh, the the Chinese officials when you know when who came to Taiwan attempted to kind of as we were saying in a way bury indigenous culture, making people wear modern clothes, adopt to, to modern ways of doing things like cooking and all that. Um, but uh, of course, some of it has survived. But I guess. Um, the other question is, you know, lately it seems that the Taiwanese government has sort of had a change of of, of uh, thought about that. In other words, they kind of they promote indigenous musical groups performing and touring around the world. They seem to be making an effort to support indigenous cultures in various ways. So I'm wondering when this sort of change happened, and do you think that it's enough? Do you think that it's, or is it too late to kind of preserve these these cultures? Oh uh, yeah, I think it's kind of it's a, it's a wave uh, during the two thousand years uh, because we have a, a political change uh, because the uh, provincial party has lost the election to the local party, you know the KMT and the the, the anyway. Um, how to say that? Is it? <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, anyway, there's mm -hmm. a two two big party in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. One is the provincial, one is for local, and the, the local one wins the election. So they are uh, focused on the right to the minorities, not only indigenous people or called uh, called Hakka or the Minanja. Um, Hokkien. Okay. Hokkien. Anyway, the I think it's a it's a wave during the two thousand years, and then mm, it's it's in enough for us. I, I I don't think so because the we we can still see some uh, microaggressive these days, and uh, you could speak so. Um, so basically you want to say um, from KMT to um, the other party, well, we have like two major parties in Taiwan. One is KMT, which is sort of like inherited from from people from China. Yes. And the other is, um, um, I, I don't know how to say this in English, but I think it's the Democrat Progression Party or well, pro Progressing Party. I'm not sure the the actual English name, but um, during this shift of the power, they changed the mindset of how how to deal with different different cultures in Taiwan, because it's not only indigenous communities. We also have like what Sue just said, Hakka, Hokkien people. And um, during the um, during the KMT, KMT time, we didn't have much freedom to preserve all those cultures. But now I think it's also because of the, um, the awareness of the regime and to, to, um, to preserve, um, to, to actually the diversity in the culture can differ different Taiwan from mostly political reason to differ Taiwan from China or from other parties. And that's how Hong En think it's it's how how the diversity got to be enhanced or got to be stressed. Yes. I see. In, in the film, we see some some protests, sort of for indigenous rights. And can you talk a bit a bit about the context of those? What, was there a protest movement that kind of led to this? You, you know, people paying more attention to this. Um, is it still going on? Could you talk more about that? Okay. Uh, yes. So some people are still doing some. Content. Arrest. Arrest. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, there's a, a musician still uh, live in front of the uh, one of our metro metro station yes. to protest for the rights of their own land. Because um, I don't know if this is the same in the states, but in Taiwan we actually have this um, land rights issue, which um, back in the old days, indigenous people actually have their own land without documents, without documenting their own rights. And um, after the, re the regime came, they took all those rights under the, under the government's hands. And now they are trying to see if there is a way to claim back the land that, that was supposed to be theirs. And there's another thing that which is very important because we are being forbidden from hunting for about thirty years. So uh, now they they are released some right to the, that indigenous people be able to hunt in the mountain again. And but uh, now this still uh, still going on. Mm -hmm. the, dis the discussion is still going on. Yes. So we don't know if if they will be able to claim back all those rights as well. But I think it's 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 progressing gradually, and yeah. we're seeing people are changing their minds, so changing their mindsets most of yeah. So yeah, that's very interesting to hear because uh, it sounds like a microcosm of what happened in the United States over a period of you know 100, 200 years, where native people were driven off their land violently. Um, and it's been a long process for them to try to, you know, reclaim that. And so it's uh, it's a little bit disheartening to hear that it happens, I guess, everywhere. Mm -hmm.
But mm -hmm. um, I just want to remind the audience that if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat and they will be relayed to me and I will relay them to our guests. Some are starting to come in, but I wanted to um, ask you a couple more questions before we get to the audience. One is related to the style of your film, the technique. I, I found it, I, I love this sort of long take style, the very com you know carefully composed images. In particular, there was a shot I was interested in where um, uh, your grandfather has trapped an animal and killed it and he's skinning it. Uh, and it's a very long shot. You really linger on him for a long time. And, and I'm wondering um, maybe what influences ha the, uh, there were on your technique and you know what made you decide to kind of linger on images like that. Okay. Uh, okay, are, are you, are you, are you uh, Chinese to, to translate for me? Uh, Taiwan Okay. Um, so the aesthetic choices that he made is actually influenced heavily by some masters in Taiwan, including Ho Xiaoxing, which Tom you might know, Tom Ho Xiaoxing and Tai Ming Liang. Yes, and both of them like to use long shots. And that's how he maybe sub, um, sub, subconsciously he made this choice also for better observe the fact or the event to to present to the to the audience as well 那那至至於那段為什麼要用這麼長的鏡頭其實我在拍的時候好像沒有想那麼多吧大概但是在剪接的時候 呃，我就开始思考到底要用多长的一段长度，然后我觉得那个呃那段有有有一些意义在吧，比如说它是一个呃，它可以它可以你可以很多给它很多的解释，比如说它是代表了原住民呃经历过非常的时间，经历过非常
extremely influential uh, filmmaker in Taiwan and elsewhere. He's I, I, he's one of my favorites as well, and his style is kind of similar to Hung En's. And I, he also treated uh, uh, local rights as well in one of his most famous films, The Puppet Master, which is took place during the Japanese occupation, right? So there's a similar thematic concern there as well. So one more question for me, and then we will turn to the audience as the questions are starting to come in. Um, the theme of this year's Mother Tongue Film Festival is the healing power of storytelling. Could you reflect on how you see this film being present in your film, this uh, theme being present in your film, and has reflecting on the history of indigeneity in Taiwan helped heal things, do you think? Uh, I have to admit that in the, in the first, while well, I was being uh, started to shoot a film, I didn't even thought about it. In the in my first thought that I will I will just want to uh, to show a, a people uh, against the environment or they have a, a, a couple sometimes conflicts. they yeah they conflicts uh, with the with the nature um, just like the the Hemingway's book the old man in the sea I was put to present the, the, this kind of idea but uh, after uh, I do some interview with my grandfather I thought that. Uh, his life experience has uh, related to the the government uh, issue or some a politic issue in Taiwan. So I add some archive in the different part of the film in the in the ed editing. You know, it's just it's in the after I, after I finished, I, I put this part in it. So. Uh, and I, I don't know. It's it's hard to define my film uh, with hell in power or else. But uh, I, I think I I think uh, the most important thing for me is that I have already do my my record of the history of the indigenous people. Okay, mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So what he wants to say is, um, he actually made all those choices or the editing choices after he he has done shooting and after reviewing all his footages the reason being is that he realized the history is actually reflected on his grandfather which is a nobody but he actually is the history himself and hence he edited in all those um hist hist historic footages however he doesn't see this this film as a healing power to be to be frank because he wants to be um he wants his film to be to be in an archive just to tell everyone in the later generations how they have lived or how they have been through as frank as authentic as possible as observ observable as possible rather than being a judge or like i said before as a naughty at all director to tell people what has happened so may basically he he wants this film to be an archive rather than a healing power which is more judgmental but of course he also mentioned maybe in the later generation when they see this from different atmosphere or different um political situation they might find find it they might find this film to be a healing power but that's what he doesn't want to put any mission to this film just yet got it thank you thank you <laughs> well let's turn to questions from the audience um the first one is uh is there an indigenous religion as well as well which has a place in people's lives so i guess the question is, is about has indigenous religion also c continued yes yeah. indeed uh, but the form has been changed or the, the meaning has been changed uh, in the old day we we, we sacrificed some animals such as pigs or the chicken in the film because of the to the, the spirit of the ancestor, but now nowadays they uh, we we kill the pigs for uh, for the sake of sharing. Yeah, for for this sharing. So so the meaning oh. has been changed. But we we we, we were because uh, the the Catholic was for being forbidden to 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 trust another uh, like such as ancestors, spirit or ancestor or something else. So I think the meaning has been changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned uh, in his his own community, there's a sort of like a um, 
community instructions, which called Gaia. And yeah. this is a highly disciplined um, instructions that you have to follow day by day. And that might not be possible nowadays, especially with contemporary age. But um, they, it's still sometimes in the like how they see how they see the world. It still has some influence in yes. in the way of they viewing the world, even through the later generation like Sue's. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next question is, uh, are there any efforts to formally preserve the Truku and other indigenous languages through early education in Taiwan right now? If so, how is COVID-19 impacting those efforts? Okay,就是我們還是有一些就是最近的就是近幾年開始有在在於小學的時候開始有一些母語的課程,但是只有在小學你到了國中高中的時候就已經就就沒有就是沒有沒有太不不太會專注在這上面。然後他的話 我觉得我觉得虽然有这样的课程，可是对于对我们现在来说还是不太够的，因为毕竟就是我们需要要熟悉这个语言，就是得要有这样的环境。所以当个当个课堂上有这样子的选修课，只有在那个那边地方使用的
，就我刚才说的，呃，他我我有受一部片的影响，叫做呃《北方的南努克》，呃《南努克》呃《In the South》。不要呃 ，In the North，In the North， 北方南部科这部片子，呃，然后还有就是我刚才说的，呃，海明威的书，呃，《老人与海》，嗯，呃，这两个东西是比较影响我在拍摄这部片的时候。In the North 是哪里的片？很旧的片子，非常旧的片子， oh. 黑白的一部。So in the very beginning of his filming career, he was heavily influenced by um two. One one film and and um one literature, which is Nanook in the in the North, which is a very old film, as he said, and um the other is what he mentioned earlier, Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea. Yes, 就是这部片的创作是这样。And that's how he got his inspiration. And maybe you can see some of his films still has that that um shadow or the hints in in his film. Yeah, that's interesting because I can I can see both of those in the, those are both classics.、Uh, obviously, we grow up reading Old Man in the Sea in school,、uh, and yeah, this idea of man in nature,、uh, that kind of imagery, and then of course, Nanook of the North is probably the most famous early documentary film, and similar themes there. It's interesting that you saw those kind of themes flowing through your your grandfather. That's that's really wonderful.、Um, Another question from the audience: The film is in Truku. I hope I'm pronouncing that right.、Uh, and in the film, there are news reports shown in the language too. What is the media landscape like for indigenous Taiwanese languages? Um, 呃，就是传统的语言是怎么样被呈现，或者是 OK OK， 呃，现在呢，台湾有一个专属原住民的电视台，然后它上面主要是以母语来播报，当然也会有也会有中文的播报。然后，呃，这这这上面这个电这个电视台就是以推广原住民的文化为主啊，各种戏剧、呃，纪录片等等的。那嗯，就是他，他就是唯一的一个，就只有一台了。就台湾就是只有一台是专门否给原住民，当然其他的出就是像是也有客家的电视台啊等等的。我现在主流的新闻台就开始以台语为主，这样就是像公司等等的。嗯、mm -hmm. ，So in terms of indigenous languages, um, Taiwan has one one and only um channel for indigenous community, which is Mainly for to contribute to to the films or to documentaries and news about indigenous community. But other than that, we only have、um, we only have Taiwanese language, which is more Hokan Hokan language that can be seen in in other media channel. But、um, yeah, so the the channel that we mentioned about indigenous indigenous community, which is on the Council of Indigenous Peoples, are、uh, the only only channel that we can find in Taiwan so far.、Mm -hmm. This next question is very interesting.、Um, you mentioned that there are Bibles and other religious texts written in Truku and other indigenous Taiwanese languages. Are there any poetic texts written or preserved in these languages, or textbooks that teach Truku?、Mm -hmm. 嗯，你原本你刚才有提到说在在圣经里面你会找到这些，呃，就是你们这些语言，那有没有一些就是像是文学啊，或者是其他的其他的文件能够找到你们的语言？然后有没有啊、okay. 呃、那个工具，嗯、呃，那个叫什么课本？课本是 OK 用的。呃，在最最最初的时候吧，当传教士来的时候，就有把这些呃母语做好，做最好的翻译。那呃，所以当时能够保存最好的最好的部分，就只有圣经，那并没有其他的文学。那一直到现在呢，就是原住民作家在做创作的时候，都还是习惯的是以中文书写，我们并没有真的有一个母语的。小说啊，或者是呃，文学等等的。嗯、mm -hmm. ，So um, Chukru is um is similar to a lot of indigenous languages that they don't have their own um characters. So um, Bible is still the 
the most complete way to assess the old language or, or the the um indeed uh, the Turku language itself. But um, so other than that, with literature and and um, other textbooks, we don't have that sort of things because again, they don't have their own characters. So when the younger generations or the or younger directors, they want to produce new, um, produce cr cr um, works using true crew or try to address in true crew um, culture, they will use Mandarin as their major language to, to express what they want to say. So, um, so yeah, the, the answer is no. 因为我们的本来的早期的从以前就是我们并没有文字这个东西 um, so he mentioned um, because it um, Truku culture is very very much a verbal verbal um, history kind of culture. So they don't actually have these kind of literature preserved. However, because with these. Um, in the recent year, they start to pre they started to um, try to find back the culture through languages. So now they all, they also have this Roman um, Roman characters written language textbooks as well as some dictionaries to give the younger generation some access to the language itself. Interesting. Okay. Uh, another question from the chat. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this film, but any comments on whether 2011's Warriors of the Tribe, uh, also known as Sidic Bale, uh, if that film boosted the Sidic language? And my apologies if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. Uh, uh, so there's actually a mixed um review or critics on this on this film because um, Zedek Bale is actually a um, a commercial feature length film, and for them, for um, okay. for for example, Truku culture, they don't actually see this as a representation a representation of their their own. Especially um, in the in the title, it goes the real man, which sort of indicating only Zedek. Um, culture are the real man or, or people in the static culture are the real man and that role that actually um, wrote some some um, critics in in his own community so it's really hard for him to to judge whether this helps the culture to revolt their their languages because for them at least in his in his community, they don't see this as a um, authentic um, film to represent indigenous cultures. But,但是,但是,就语言的保存,它确实是有起到一些作用,就是,这部片也对,呃,怎么说呢,呃,其他的导演在试着拍摄这样的片子的时候会更注重它的, 关于他的文化的主题性。Oh, okay. Um, so um, he he mentioned that 
And the film itself might serve as an inspiration or to serve as an example for further, for younger generations, for, for new, for upcoming um, directors to, um, they might be more willing to use authentic languages or um, to pay more attention or be more careful on the culture they are shooting. So yeah, so so in that sense, Sadek Balai might help the might help the cultural preservation as well. Okay, 然后然后我还想特别提一点是，是因为赛德克巴莱他其实是一个魏德森，他是是一个汉人导演拍的。嗯，对。那呃，其实我们并没有，就是我们我们有一些原名的导演，可是我们在于对于这样拍摄这样的剧情片上面非常少，就是大概只有拍就是原名导演去拍，这只可能只有一两部这样子的经历而已。嗯，所以我们对于我们有很多的。原名导演在拍摄纪录片，可是我们并没有，并没有非常商业片拍摄原版的的人在、啊嗯。所以你觉得就是他的他的这个角色，就是你你觉得他这个角色代表的意义是？呃，没有，就是所以你不能太 critic 他的意思。哦、oh, ，OK， 嗯、um, ，and he want he want to point out that the director of Sadek Balai is actually from Han community. So he actually he is not a indigenous people himself.、Yes. So um he he want to point out that um taking into account of his background, so he doesn't want to being too harsh on the criticism of this film. And he also want to pay、um, pay some tribute to what he has done because、um, we have a lot of indigenous directors, but none of、um, they have produced a lot of films or documentaries, but not as as big as this one, and to not as、um, not as capable of dragging so much attention as this one. So that's some credit that he has to give him. Great, thank you.、Uh, two more questions.、Uh, the first one is: Has the government of Taiwan allocated any funding to officially recognize Truku land or Truku language preservation? You know, they have allocated funding to recognize Truku land or Truku language preservation. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes
电影导演啊，或者是或者是音乐啊，啊、oh, ，or musicians， though they can they have this this um freedom to to apply for、yeah. those fundings if they want to. Yeah, so that's what the government is doing now, and it's not just for Turku languages or for Turku culture. It's for all the indigenous communities in Taiwan. Yes, thank you. And the the last and perhaps inevitable question:、uh, Could you talk a bit about your next project that you're working on? Uh, I I I now is a documentary that is in the early stages, almost completed. Then it will be released in a few weeks. Then I will go to 呃，现在已经开始准备一些呃跑音站的一些事情。嗯哼，那个电影叫什么名字 ？Dreams of Shining。Dreams of Shining。对对对，无意之梦先这样。啊，好的。嗯 ，So, uh, he has, he actually has, has his documentary is com coming up, which is a new documentary about the root, the traditional. Well, coming back to the the previous question, it's actually about the traditional religion in the community. Which is Dream of Sherman? Yes, and it it's coming up in the upcoming months. Yeah,、right? I'm in the post、uh, production. It's going to be fi being finished, and、uh, I also uh, uh, write a script about the the drama, and, and it's already been being supplied applied from from the government, and this、uh, I think we are going to shoot it at the、uh, uh, next year. Right. So he he is at um the the um film that he's mentioned mentioning is um at the first feature film that he had the full length feature film that he is preparing and he had already got the funding from the government. So he's now in the pre production, um pre production and he is looking to shoot the the film the next year, which hopefully the COVID nineteen has gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, we don't have any、uh, time for any more questions. I understand there are more kind of flowing in, and maybe if you if you'd like you know, to answer them、uh, in, on social media channels later on, it's up to you. But、uh, for right now, I just like to thank you for sharing your insights and participating in this Q and A today, and also thanks、uh, for your translation services, Betty.、Uh, we're grateful to you.、Uh, now I'd like to、uh, ask Josh to come back and、uh, wrap things up. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Olin and Betty. That was a wonderful conversation. As always, it, it it always tends to be too short. So, I appreciate you guys taking the time and and re want to reiterate、um, Tom's comment that we're happy to take more questions via our social media.、Um, but in addition, my thanks to you all for taking the time this morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. I also want to thank our captioner and our ASL interpreters who helped to bring this event to you. And、um, also to the people behind the scenes, many people who you don't see, in particular Sarah Rothman and Kate Haas, who have helped to make this conversation possible. Please do follow Recovering Voices page on Facebook to get notifications about future events. You can find us also on YouTube. Visit our website, mothertongue.si.edu, and come back here—that is, virtually wherever you are in the world. Back to our festival for our next program, which is Language Revitalization Education Panel, and that will be on Friday, April second, and it will be hosted by my colleague Mary Lynn at the Center for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.